Okay, hello everyone. I want to welcome you to Alec Trust Virtual Open House for the Certificate in Transpersonal Psych Sorry, Transpersonal Coaching Psychology. That's going to be starting in February. And I want to uh, introduce you to Jevin Dangeli, who is the course leader for the program. And he will introduce you to the rest of the coaching team. And from there, they'll all speak and share about their experiences in the coaching program. So over to you, Jevin. Thank you, Nick. Hello, one and all. Good to see so many faces coming in to join us for an introduction to transpersonal coaching psychology and the one year certificate program, which we offer at Aleph Trust. It's so good to see so many people coming in. I'm pausing for a moment just to see if others are joining us in the last minute. And just to let you know, this evening we'll be introducing the course and the tutors on this course, what the course entails, and then we'll hand over to any questions at all, because we're not here to present anything as such, but rather to stay interested in you and what your questions might be about transpersonal coaching in general, and perhaps even how the course works. So before I introduce other team members, as is traditional at every one of our online meetings, we take a few moments to come together into this virtual space and to play a little to see if we can get past this limitation of looking at each other on these flat screens and cultivate a bit of that being in this shared space together feeling, which is a characteristic of transpersonal coaching. So if you're open to this, I'll invite us all just to ease into our seats and to ease into our bodies and to take a few precious moments for yourself and just settle in and settle down, tuning into your body and perhaps what its present needs might be. Perhaps you might like to adjust your posture to find a comfortable upright position and allow awareness to gravitate toward the sensation of your breath. Feeling into the movements of each inhalation and exhalation as they come and go. and allowing your awareness to sense into the fullness of each breath. And as you continue to feel the breath flowing through you, you might allow awareness to expand and to get a sense of the entire volume of space that your whole body occupies. Tuning into the space that you fill. The space within which you experience yourself the space between thoughts, the space between breaths, the space between you and everything else in the room where you find yourself today. And that sacred space that connects you to everything else in the universe. And from this broader space, you can experience yourself being breathed. And with this, Returning awareness 
to the sensations of those in-breaths and out-breaths as they move through you. Feeling fully present in your body in this physical space, connected to the solidity of the earth that holds and supports you, and feeling connected to the others that join us in this virtual space today. So thank you. If your eyes are closed, you might like to have them be opened again, but you can maintain this state of expansiveness to whichever degree you experience it and to whatever degree you're comfortable staying in the space. It's perfectly safe and fine to do so. So thank you for joining in that process and for being here today. My name is Javon Dangeli. I'm the program leader in transpersonal coaching psychology at Aleph Trust. And before I say anything more about transpersonal coaching in this course, I'd like to introduce the other two tutors that join me in the delivery of this program. And first, I'll ask my colleague, Henny Geldenhuis, to introduce himself. And perhaps, Henny, if you have anything to say about what you enjoy about transpersonal coaching, I certainly would love to hear it again. <laughs> yes, thank you, Javon. And, and welcome, each of you, to our family. My name is Henny. I'm one of the co-tutors on the program. So we will get to know each other very well. I joined you from South Africa. So we have, um, we have members of our family from all over the planet. I love transpersonal coaching and I happen to think that we need more of it. And I'm, I'm very passionate about the science, but also the art of transpersonal coaching. My particular interest is in the healing arts. So I'm actually a medical practitioner by background, and I've always been fascinated by how we can combine transpersonal psychology, in particular, in particular the, the coaching aspect, with the healing paradigm. And I think the two are very complementary. So my journey has been one of exploring this whole philosophy, but also the practice. That to me is the most important thing about transpersonal psychology coaching it makes a difference in the real world. It matters. It's not about the abstract concepts, although those are interesting. It's about the real world. That's my passion, and I hope you will join us in that adventure. Thank you. Thank you, Henny. And from my point of view, your picture froze for a second, but right at a crucial moment that left me hanging and wondering what transpersonal phenomenon was occurring right there. And I love that state. So thank you. I'd love to ask Jules DeVito to introduce herself. She's also one of the tutors on this program. Thank you, Javon. And thank you, Henny, for that introduction as well. So it's so lovely to see so many people this evening, even though it's virtual on Zoom, it's lovely to connect. So yeah, my name is Jules and I live in London, but I've spent a lot of my life traveling and I lived in Asia for a long time. So when I'm not uh, working on the transpersonal coaching course, I'm working as a transpersonal coach and I specialize in working with highly sensitive people. So that's really a passion of mine. Um, finding this synergy between transpersonal coaching and what it means to be a highly sensitive person. And I find that the two go really, really well together because there's this integration of the spiritual dimension, which so many highly sensitive people relate to. And I'd actually be curious how many people on the call this evening relate to being a highly sensitive person. And before I came into the world of coaching, I worked as a teacher for a long time. So I worked as a primary school teacher for over 10 years. And I already started integrating aspects of transpersonal coaching into my teaching practice 
and into the schools that I worked in. Um, and I'd be happy to share more about that if anybody is interested. So, yeah, for me, the reason I really love transpersonal coaching is I find it's a really great holistic integrative framework, but there's also this freedom within it for us to apply it in so many different real world contexts. So as I've mentioned, it's something I've applied into teaching, into education, and then my work with highly sensitive people as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and there's so much more I could say, but I think I'll stop there for now. And it's lovely to meet everyone. Thank you, Jules and Henny too. So us three are the tutors that deliver the transpersonal coaching content over the duration of this one year program. And it's completely online, as you might already know. And it takes place over three modules. The first one being more knowledge gaining, exploring the theories and concepts that underpin transpersonal coaching, namely transpersonal psychology, a very broad field, which we explore quite deeply. We also explore mindfulness-based applications, which inform our transpersonal coaching model. And to less of a degree than in the past, the holistic and integrative aspects of neuro-linguistic programming. And uh, in the past, our transpersonal coaching approach was somewhat more informed by NLP these days, less so, since we've leaned more into the methods that transpersonal psychology have made practical and useful with relevance to the coaching profession. I guess one of the hallmarks of our coaching orientation is that it tends to include but transcend many of the methods and approaches that are more commonly known in the world of professional coaching. So we respect and do take into consideration more behavioral cognitive approaches that lend themselves well to traditional forms of coaching. But we also recognize that expanded states of consciousness have tremendous practical value to coaches and especially to coaching clients. Since the experience of going beyond your ordinary way of perceiving yourself or problem situation for that matter, enables us to gain a connection to the creative levels of consciousness, to different perceptual positions, and to ways of knowing and being that are not normally available to us. And as transpersonal coaches, we're able to facilitate short processes, similar to that little breathing exercise we did at the start of today's session, to enable clients to be present and to gain new ways of looking at that situation and understanding the problem that they might be presenting for coaching. And in so doing, they gain access to a range of different responses that are not normally available to them. The coaching session then continues to help them to integrate this new understanding. And so it has direct application in the context of their presenting issue. That's a quick, very brief, example of how we might apply transpersonal coaching and there'll be an opportunity to ask questions about that as we continue. So we get into the theory of all of that, explore how it works and why it works in the first module. And then in the second module, you'll be learning about these concepts in a more direct way through peer-to-peer -peer coaching, putting the theories into practice and a three-month immersion into your own integrative practice. And while you're engaging in your practice and receiving res support from your peers in the program, you'll also be attending regular webinars and sharing circles and receiving support from the tutors. Your first assignment as such of the entire program comes at the end of that second module, where you write a 2,000-word report based on your experience of the integral practice and the peer-to-peer -peer coaching that you would have been engaging in. That gets submitted around September. And then commences module three, 
And in module three, you start to really get into the field of coaching by doing pro bono coaching with external clients. We'll actually bring you external clients if you need them. We, we assign you to clients who are MSc students at LF Trust, as well as other students who are part of our broader community, as well as alumni. So many of them volunteer to be clients for the full the coaches that are looking for additional clients, but you may also bring your own. If, for example, you are already a professional coach and you have a client base, you may continue coaching those clients and logging those hours. And your integral practice is also intended to continue throughout the third module. And as the course progresses, we get more and more into the refined applications of transpersonal coaching, and all of its methods and skills that are associated with our model. And at the end of that third module, you write a 2000 word report on your experience and on the insights that you've gained through all of uh, your coaching and practice experiences. And that gets submitted at the end of the program in January. Okay, so that's a very brief tour, and it almost sounds a little bit out of reach, and I'd like to make it a little bit more available to all of you by inviting two graduates that we have with us today to speak about their experience of the program. And perhaps if they are using the skills today, they, they may like to share something about how those skills are being applied in their lives after the course. So Kelly, I wonder if you're ready to tell us a little bit about your experience as a graduate of this program. Yeah, he hello everyone. Um, I'm in Wales in the UK and um, I think it would be good for me to kind of share that in my, in my former career, I used to work for the NHS. I was in the public health safeguarding kind of domain. And I actually left that career because I completely burned myself out. I, and, um, and I took time out. And, and through that journey, I went on my own personal development journey, trying to kind of, I had a, I, I, I hit a point of not knowing who I was. And I had to kind of go on this journey of, not identifying with the career that I left and trying to find me again. And I, after doing years of personal development, I actually first started with a coaching program, traditional coaching program. And I did that and it was good. Um, but when I came to the end of it, it felt like a piece was missing. It didn't feel as holistic as I wanted to. And I couldn't really, put, and uh, I didn't really know what that piece was but I just knew something was missing for me that felt right to me. And I kept on um, coming back to um, this course, this Transpersonal Coaching Psychology course, and I kept looking. And at that time, I had absolutely no idea what transpersonal coaching was. I didn't even, I didn't have a clue, but something intuitively kept on drawing me back, drawing me back, drawing me back. In the end, um, I just knew I had to kind of take the leap and I can honestly say it was being the best decision that I have made on kind of multiple levels. It has been like a year of real deep transformation inside myself. Um, and what I mean by that, it allowed me to recognize that everything is in our kind of, what we need to do comes from when we self-connect a bit more deeply to ourselves. And when we connect more deeply with ourselves, we can understand others better. Um, we can make better choices in our kind of day to day. We get a bit more conscious about the decisions and how that aligns with our values. And it really kind of helped even being a mum. I'm a mum to two children and how I can even kind of um, respond to them, how I can interact with them. And um, also in the kind of the coaching um, domain, because obviously I started in traditional what it really taught me is how I really trust myself and really be present and how with the different tools that I learned from the course, how I cultivate that presence and really fine tune and really becoming more aware of what's happening moment to moment, rather than being my cognitive trying to think of, oh, what's the, what's the next question to ask? And um, it really got me to really trust and, and allow myself to see and believe what I was seeing and get really curious and really bring compassion and really deeper connection with clients. Um, and what I've found is it's really helped people, no matter if they know what transpersonal is, it gets people to kind of really listen about what is important to them 
So the doing aspect comes from a much more like intrinsic place rather than people doing what they think they need to do. And they start to really see their patterns that are getting them limited. So then they can start one bit at a time, create different choices that align with them. So it's felt more kind of authentic. And there's a, a kind of a deeper resonance for the people that I've been working with. And it's also helped me in, in a professional capacity, give me a lot more clarity on where I want to take my career as well. That is constantly unfolding. And, um, and I'm really grateful for the time I've had here. And I continue to be a part of the community, which is always something I look forward to. And if there's any other questions, I'm more than happy uh, to answer. Thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate that. It really touches me to, to hear you speak to what this program has done for you and continues to, to do in your life. So really good to be sharing this path with you. And I wonder, Claire, since you're with us, another graduate, if you'd like to speak about your experience of the program, it'd be lovely to hear from you. I think, I think Tesso had a question, actually. Did you have your hand up, Tesso? Yeah, I did. Sorry. I just wanted to ask Kelly, what do you do now? What are you using the course and coaching yourself then? Yeah, so basically what I do now, I do some I do coaching online. So I still do coaching online. And then I've joined a local therapy center. So I've started I've only recently that one I'm starting to I'm beginning to begin to do face-to-face -face coaching. So I'm I've also as well, I've gone back to university and I'm doing humanistic psychotherapy. And what I've found, or everything that I've learned from the transpersonal has been absolutely foundational in, in allowing me to kind of um, go into this course. I really feel so much more equipped um, kind of taking this path. Um, but it's through the course that give me much more clarity on actually, you know, this is what feels right to me. It really allowed me to trust my decisions rather than overthink multiple of decisions so that's where I am now so I do both so I'm a student and doing coaching oh thanks Kelly you're welcome you're welcome um <clears throat> so shall I, shall I share Please yes um so it's really funny Kelly because I uh, I also kept coming back to this course constantly I was like going back to the website reading over it and then it just kept drawing me back and I think when I decided to do it I think I literally signed up the week before it was about to start um and I think also it was in the I don't know which year, first or second year of lockdown I think and my work made my work as a chiropractor that's my reason for seeking out something like this because I felt very for a long time, I've been feeling that there was a lot of what, what, where people were coming to me with physical problems. I felt very aware that quite often there was it wasn't always a physical issue, but their pain or their kind of suffering was coming from something else, either uh, emotional or spiritual lacking. Or, and I think it was through that I felt like I needed to equip myself to be able to deal better with that. Um, so I think then also just in that year of lockdown, just personally finding that whole time quite stressful where the practice was closed. And, and then I think that's when I was like, right, I'm just this is the time to do it. Um, and I suppose I'd like to share how my experience of the actual course. Um, we had people from literally from all over the world from really quite different walks of life. And I felt like we really created quite a, um, you know, really quite a, a strong, close community. I can't remember how many were, were in the group, but we were from, from you know all corners of, of the world and very interesting characters um I felt like especially the first module was quite different to anywhere how I had learned before um in fact at some points I was thinking you know when are we going to start doing like the proper seminars you know but actually it was a very organic learning process because we had um like the forum where we would write our post and then we would all comment and read on each other's posts so I actually felt when I realized how that was working, I thought it was actually really clever. I learned so much from so many different people and not just being fed some information by some you know, lecturers. So I thought that was actually really an excellent way of learning and I really appreciated that. Um, both Henny and Jerron were just, I mean, just such wonderful, wise people. Um, who I feel like I really learned loads from, learned from everybody actually on the course. And I think, as Kelly said, a big part of my learning was 
just again coming out of the head more often and really just coming into the body coming into a different place to find answers and I'm always struck at how quickly those answers can come when we're not trying to work things out with the head by creating space you know for those insights to come um so I kind of I use the work now um I do have coaching like some of my patients I now have see for coaching but in my actual practice day to day it's changed me as a practitioner I'm um very uh, very intentional in what I do like I create like when I'm hands-on with people it's a very in, intended um silence that's there which I think really helps people experience the hands-on experience more than if I'm just there prattling and talking over the top of it so it's changed me at work and also the practice when we learn our, our practices I've continued you know continue with that sort of meditation practice and um yeah so it's helped me on a personal level as well so yeah i it was yeah a great year of life and continue so actually i'm continuing on with um with the group um you know since then so yeah yeah any other questions <laughs> thank you claire really good to hear from you and if anybody has any questions directly to claire or kelly for that matter feel free to ask um something you mentioned there about intention and and silence it reminds me of our fundamental way of working in transpersonal coaching which is the application of open awareness as a means to enter into a state of being deeply present within yourself as the coach or facilitator and to offer the client some guidance to enter into being very present and embodied at the same time. And then through entering into open awareness together, and we provide you with a variety of skills to facilitate this, both coach and client co-create the held space. And that quality of holding in and of itself has proven over the years to be transformative in nature. It allows for a very organic unfolding of resourcefulness and creativity, the client gets to tap into that. And then the coach's job is to help them to embody and apply the insights that they gain from being in open awareness. So this quality of being and the intentionality to be of service to a client or a group of clients for that matter, or even a group of, of students or your own children at home, I can speak as a father to this. Holding space in this manner, utilizing applied open awareness has tremendous practical value. And in the beginning, students on this course are usually very hungry to learn all the skills and techniques, and there's plenty of them to be shared. But we keep reminding students that we have this very basic or fundamental way of working, which is just the manner in which we hold space for the client's process. And uh, then you learn all these techniques and by the end of the program, we inevitably discover that the best changes, the most meaningful sessions, both for the coach and the client have come about through just utilizing open awareness. So we continue to emphasize that and its value. And the good news about that is that uh, it's a very simple skill set, you know, there's nothing extremely fancy or far out or anything about it, very pragmatic, very simple. You will come away with fancy techniques and very sophisticated ways of working in a coaching capacity, but you might also realize that all of those fancy skills are less necessary than you might think they would be when you know how to hold space in this way. So I think of it as a transformative learning journey, and I think both Claire and um, Kelly have spoken to that. This course is as much about gaining skills as it is about your own personal and transpersonal growth for that matter. And um, lots of students come onto this program who do not intend on becoming coaches. They come to, to learn about transpersonal psychology and its practical applications in the world. And that's what this one-year program does uh, enable. 
So yes, in addition to learning about transpersonal coaching, we also provide you with optional webinars, academic skills training webinars, well-being webinars. We have different members of staff who come in and uh, teach these various optional webinars. If you would like to learn how to write an excellent essay at the end of module two and three, the skills and the resources to be able to do, do so are provided to you, even if you don't have any academic background yet, we'll actually train you from the ground up. And then because you'll be working on yourself in this program, we provide the well-being support through webinars and one-to-one -one sessions with our well-being office are also made available for those who need it. And then there are a whole bunch of guest webinars, experts in the field who come to speak to us quite regularly. And as a transpersonal coaching psychology student, not only are you engaged in this one year program unto itself, but you gain access to the wider Aleph Trust community. And so I'm glad to have Francesca Hector with us today because she's our community coordinator. And Fran, I wonder if you'd like to speak to how our coaching students can become part of the broader community that are sharing this wider you could say, journey together for the year-long program. Thanks, Jovan. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely to see everyone here. And and just to just to add to what Jovan is saying, the, the Transpersonal Coaching Psychology Program, it's held within the wider Aleph Trust community, and all students are welcomed into this and can interact with it as you wish, according to the time that you have. So you'll be invited to join wider community events where you can also meet students across all the programs in more informal events and also join additional guest webinars with experts in the fields of consciousness, spirituality, transpersonal psychology from the other programs like the MSC that, that's also running out of trust and also participate in initiatives such as our Conscious Community Initiative. This has an applied focus on holistic change facilitation, very related to transpersonal coaching, open awareness, and contribute to our digital publications, and then remain connected through the alumni community after graduation, as well as with the transpersonal coaching community. So you'll, you'll hear all about that if you, if you do join us. And uh, I'll pass back to Jevon. And Thank you, Fran. Yeah, there's, and there's I'm, a... I'm seeing Sol's question there. Great one for Jules, I think. So Jules, if you haven't yet had a look in the chat window, there's a question I think you're perfectly suited to answer. But before you do, um, just to add that after the program, as Claire mentioned, there is ongoing um, possibilities to continue your professional development. So by graduating at the Transpersonal Coaching Psychology Program, you can join our supervision group. And we get together every month, at least once per month, for group supervision calls. And so as you enter into the professional field, that ongoing support and, and a huge resource base remain continually available to you. And you are also fully eligible for coach accreditation from the International Association of Coaches, Therapists and Mentors by the time you complete this program. So there's no strings attached. By the time you've got the certificate, you're welcome to knock on that accreditation body's door. They recognize the certificate straight away and you can, if you want, immediately obtain coach accreditation. Javon, I would love to hear from Nikki. Her hand has been up for a while. Okay. And would Great. you like me to answer Sol's question first? And then shall we start there and then move on to Nikki? Is that okay? Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so, Sol, thank you for your question. And, you know, as a sensitive person myself, before I trained in transpersonal coaching, I would say that I struggled a lot with managing that overwhelm or that sense of empathy, um, especially when I was working with others and in my teaching practice as well. And one of the core techniques or um, fundamental frameworks that we learn on the course is, as Javon has mentioned, open awareness. 
And it's all about how we can hold space in coaching sessions, how we can uh, stay grounded and centered in our sense of self and learn how to um, have this open, compassionate and empathetic uh, awareness for, for our clients and who we're working with without taking on those emotions or taking on those energies of the other person. So it is probably what we spend uh, the most time looking at in, in the first module, this sense of open awareness, holding space for ourselves and, and our clients and learning really how to, to manage that, that overwhelm so it doesn't become overwhelm. Um, so that's a short answer to something that is more complex, but something that we spend a lot of time looking at on, on the course. Thanks, Jules. Nikki, we'd love to hear from you. Hi. Um, so I, I just from, I, I guess, from your own perspective, really, um, my background has been in bereavement counselling, but I'm looking, to, I'm looking for something different. And I'm thinking this may well be it. But I just wanted to kind of get a sense of um, how or what, how would you say or what would you say the difference is between, I guess, counselling and transpersonal coaching, if that's OK? It's a great question. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I, I guess a question I might have would be, are we comparing traditional counselling to transpersonal coaching? Uh, are we perhaps going to consider transpersonal counselling approaches? And over the years, there have been a number of um, students on this course who work in the professional counseling and therapy areas, including bereavement and um, those working with the dying. So a number of people have attended over the years who work in hospices. And um, unfortunately, none of them are amongst the graduates with us this evening. But as you can imagine, when we're working with the transpersonal perspective as coaches, the, how can I say, um, that which might ordinarily be perceived as what separates us from the other side is a much thinner veil or membrane. And so accessing the transpersonal dimension and having a direct experience of what is beyond the self and what is beyond this lifetime can help clients to feel closer to those that they have lost or those that they are in the process of losing, which in turn helps them to come to terms with the actuality of, of their experience. It forges a deeper felt connection to these precious souls in their lives that uh, they have lost or are in the process of losing. And so that completely transforms the entire idea of loss, doesn't it? We forge a deeper sense of connection and relationship that tends to, you know, metaphysically speaking, transcend space and time as we ordinarily experience those phenomena. And it's hard to explain how that has meaning and value to the people in these contexts, but our findings are that it is deeply meaningful and valuable to them. Nikki, that's a vague response to your question. I wonder if you have a follow-up that I could speak to, if anything. Okay, thanks for your question. Colleen, how many people are typically in a cohort? This course has boomed in popularity over the years. So the first time we presented this particular version of the Transpersonal Coaching Psychology Program to Aleph Trust was in 2017. So that's when it went from being an in-person training, which I've been engaged in teaching since 2007. And in 2017, um, the online version of it got presented. And at that time, there were just eight students. 
And the numbers have just continued to double since then. The current cohort is 35 students. Last year was also 35 students. And so between the three tutors and the rest of the Aleph Trust staff, uh, faculty that support us and all of the students, that's a very reasonable number. So when we come together in webinars and in sharing circles online, usually not all of the 35 enrolled students are present because they're across time zones. And it's for that reason that we present these webinars and sharing circles, which take place about every two weeks, sometimes a little bit more often than that, um, at different time intervals. So everything on this program is based on UK time. So we'll have one live session at 10 a.m. UK time. The next live session will be 1 p.m. two weeks later. Two weeks after that, the next live session will be 8 p.m. And so it goes from 10 to 1 to 8 p.m. And that tries to make the live sessions as available to all people around the world. But the good news is that you are permitted to, to miss a number of the live sessions and all the recordings of those remain available to you for the entire duration of the program. So as long as you watch the recordings and then use that information to re-engage in the program through the live forums and so on, um, we're quite satisfied with that. Jules, are you seeing Sol's follow up in the chat window? Hello, I am. I was just typing a reply, actually. I thought I'd type while you were talking. But I, I will say again, it's something which I could spend a long time talking about. But to summarize in the context of this, um, this call, that the technique of open awareness would be the most beneficial and what we spend a lot of time learning in the first module of the course and throughout the whole course as well. And that would also be beneficial for, as you've asked, removing or working with that fear, that fear of feeling what others feel. Uh, so we also do on the course, we talk about working with, with parts. That's something I'm quite passionate about, how we can work with parts within ourselves and parts within our clients as well. So that's also a great technique and um, model that we, we learn within the course, course. So you would learn how to navigate your own parts and the parts of the client. So I hope that adds some more to, to your question or answering your question. Philip, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, thank you. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm a psychotherapist and I'm wondering to what extent you would think that um, the techniques and, and all that is taught in the, in the course can be applied also to the treatment of like classical mental disorders or is it more really for coaching without like manifest mental disorders or can it also be applied to mental disorders? Great question, thank you. Um, so I'm willing to have a go at responding to your question. First of all, others will be welcome to respond too. There have always been a number of psychotherapists and um, clinical psychologists and medical practitioners who attend this program who are interested in applying the transpersonal coaching approach in their medical and clinical and psychotherapeutic um, contexts with their own patients and their ways of applying these particular coaching approaches is, is very streamlined, very fluid. They uh, have even reported over the years that, that they find themselves doing only transpersonal coaching in sessions with some clients. And sometimes the transpersonal coaching approach informs their therapeutic approach. So they find themselves blending techniques and um, coming up with their own combinations depending on the client's presenting issue and so on. But I also want to add that you needn't have any kind of therapeutic or clinical background in order to benefit from transpersonal coaching. In fact, a number of people who attend this course have no background in coaching therapy at all. 
they have a fascination perhaps in this transpersonal and in personal growth and development and self-healing. And they come for that reason. But come the end of the program to having learned all these skills and discovered that they too, having never done this work before, can make a difference immediately because of the practical applications that they're learning, that they want to go out and do this work and, and start to see clients, even when that wasn't part of their original um, intention. Um, so once again, a slightly vague uh, response there. I, I wonder if there's a follow-up to the application of, of transverse coaching in the psychotherapeutic context. No, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, great. You're welcome, Philip. Thanks for your question. Yeah. Vincent, you're yeah. next. Oh, sorry, Javon, sorry. Before, Henny would before like we to do that, Javon, uh, so there's a question from Maya in the chat window, which is actually sort of related to this discussion. Maya is asking, what is your experience and how the official community of psychotherapists look at coaches as therapists in similar areas? And she's particularly interested in working with children. So, um, there is, obvious, there is overlap between how psychotherapists or counselors work and how coaches work. There are also differences. I happen to think that our particular way of coaching, transpersonal coaching, is very different from conventional, mainstream, performance-driven or business-type coaching. So I think we're actually much closer to the therapeutic approaches than many other traditions of coaching. But there are differences. Um, I think both disciplines have value to add, and I think it's important for both disciplines to appreciate that they might have certain limits, um, but they also have certain strengths. And so I think this course is also about exploring those aspects. And uh, we will keep asking the question, what is the difference between coaching and counseling and therapy? And it's good that we keep asking those questions and exploring those questions because it strengthens what we do well, and also it prevents us from trying to do things that we aren't trained to do. Thanks for that, Henny. And if I might add, um, working from a transpersonal perspective, holding space for the clients and whatever emerges for them in sessions, enables them to go deep within themselves and even to sometimes unveil the root causes of a presenting issue. And that unveiling may even reveal deep wounds from the past, perhaps even trauma if it exists for the client. And when you do this work, uh, in invariably you discover that um, oftentimes trauma does underpin a presenting issue that the client didn't even expect. And when that arises in the session, you are trained on this program to hold space for that client, to help them to connect and to learn from the experience. We do not regress them into the memories of the past, but we are able to work with the phenomenology associated with that in terms of how it makes them feel and behave in the present. We can work with the parts, as Jules has pointed out, the parts of the psyche that have become as what is referred to in internal family systems as exiles and the protector parts in IFS terminology that come to the rescue of these exiles. We actually are a trauma-informed coaching methodology and draw from various other schools of thought and practice in order to walk that fine line where coaching and therapy meet, often that gray zone that is perhaps one foot in the therapeutic field, one foot in the coaching profession. And as transpersonal coaches, you're trained to be comfortable walking that line and knowing where the line is so that you can make responsible referrals should traumatic material manifest and become overwhelming for the client. Okay, so quite a few hands up in the chat window. Vincent, you're next. Hi, Javan. Um... I have two questions that I um, have in mind. The one is um, a practical thing. The other is a more um, philosophical thing that that's, is tied to the attitude. The one thing would be um, how the the practical, let's say, the situation of transformation would look like. Maybe you can give an example uh, of a client and... Um, the other thing is in, in the videos on your website, there's a particular situation 
uh, where you just say, okay, um, I'm not sure what, what, it, what you refer to in specific, but it was, okay, it's just a story in your mind and, and it appeared to be a bit depreciative and then we just want to make sure that it's uh, not going into the direction to say to people, okay, yeah, it's just a story in your mind, just drop it and everything's fine. So, um, and it's just something I want to make sure to feel safe. Okay, thank you. So if I understand your question correctly, uh, we certainly recognize um, the stories that we have, that clients present, and we take those stories very seriously. Um, these are the metaphors that we live by. They are the metaphors that make up our experience of self. So although there may be stories, metaphors, and narrative, we take these elements very seriously because they determine how we think, feel, and behave in any type of situation. So it's not just a story, but it is a story that we honor and respect and work with in a very pragmatic way. Um, so we are a completely client-centered coaching approach. We work with the words and the nonverbal communication that the clients use to describe their understanding of their presenting problem. So we use their conscious and unconscious communication to inform the appropriate approach to use with each client. So it becomes a tailored process that the coach in deep connection with the client then intuitively realizes may be of best value to that client. And then it's presented. It's like an offering. So what I'm sensing, dear client, might be best for you in this, in this instance could be this or that. What feels right to you? And then continuing to calibrate to the client's verbal and nonverbal response to the question, an intuitive decision is reached about how to proceed. So very organic, very natural, working with the client's process step by step. Vincent, I think that might, I've had a go at answering part of your question. Um, is there a part that we haven't yet addressed? Uh, yeah, I think it's so far from that. That was the, 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 the second part. And I'm happy to hear that. And it's pretty aligned with what I'm uh, trained in already. And the other thing is, um, what's the, 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 let's say, an exact mechanic of um, what are moments of transformation where you may go into a certain state with your client and what might be a story from a client, for example, where some transformation took place? I'm happy to have a go at that. Um, gosh, which one comes first? Uh, so we experience and, and witness transformation in most coaching sessions. And uh, that transformation it depends on how, how one defines transformation, I guess, um, is something that the client feeds back in terms of a deep change within themselves, resulting in a new feeling toward the person or situation that they presented for coaching. And with that, a congruent willingness to, in, to engage in that situation that's radically different from how they felt or were able to respond to the situation before. Um, and so transformation may be something that gets initiated in the session, but with the client, we work toward their congruent commitment to a practice that helps them to embody the change that they've experienced in the session so that that new, more resourceful state can progressively become an embodied trait, a new way of experiencing themselves in a particular situation. And that's a common outcome that we witness as transpersonal coaches. So sometimes it's a full-blown shift within the session and the client knows that they're changed at a deep level. And sometimes there's some work to be done that can become embedded and embodied through a commitment to a practice. And then both coach and client formulate a practice that's going to work well for the client that they're committed to, that they then uh, continue with after the session. And I'm just referring to a single session, but there may be a progression of sessions over a period of time that uh, facilitate that transformation for the client. 
So that's a, a general um, response from me. I don't know if any of my other colleagues or graduates on this program can speak to their own experience of um, facilitating or witnessing transformation in coaching. Vincent, I hope that addressed your question sufficiently for now anyway. Okay, great. Good to hear from you. Um, Dawn, I'm seeing your hand up. Would you like to come next? Hi. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've not really formulated how to ask the question, but I, I was wondering if in this course um, you cover like the parameters of of coaching in terms of like where the boundaries of coaching start and stop in terms, I guess, of like, where you're entering into very much a therapeutic, like, you know, you're sinking into feelings and you're unsure about trigger, re-triggering, re-traumatizing, like things like that. And also in terms of how you ensure that it's a ethical uh, work dynamic all the time. So you're not, so, so that it's an empowering relationships rather than something that people come dependent on to make sure you, you, you know like what how many sessions do you do do you cover do you start like a coaching with a specific um you know how do you structure it is there always something in mind that it comes to an end at a specific point do you base it do you know it does do we cover things like that within the course so that we make sure that it doesn't just go on forever and someone becomes dependent on it and it doesn't ever feel like because I mean transformational is never ending. So how do we manage that as a coach? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question and reflection there. You know, there are clients that come without a presenting problem because they just want to take their own personal development to a whole new level. And so transformation might be from being okay to being amazing. And they may want to have check-in um, times perhaps once per month or so with their coach to make sure that they're staying at the top of their game or continuing to grow and expand in a way that's meaningful to them that does happen although most of the time clients come to coaching because they are bothered by something they're struggling they're feeling blocked or stuck um, or they're having emotional turmoil in some way and so the coach works with them to overcome that issue i think one um one characteristic of coaching, regardless of the type of coaching, is that it works quite rapidly to empower clients to tap into their own resources and to move on without the coach becoming a crutch for that person. Unlike some certain styles of psychotherapy, that um, coach, uh, clients may become more reliant on in order for them to keep their heads above water. So we aim to empower clients as, as rapidly as possible, but not any faster than what remains meaningful and useful to the client. And we do see tremendous results within a single session. That doesn't mean they're completely done and never need to see the coach again after one session. A series of sessions may indeed be useful. And a lot of my clients come for three sessions. Um, and I have a six session program, which I teach on this program called the Integrative Coaching Program. And so you'll learn how to deliver a six session package of that kind, because there may be clients for whom that is a good uh, all round approach or perhaps just a constructive starting point. So it's difficult to say, you know, this is what we do because it's not a one size fits all method. But just to your other question about ethics and, and you know, uh, being careful that we don't overstep that line, we explore this a lot in module one already. So where is the line between for example, psychosis and a spiritual awakening, because there are many overlapping phenomena. And so might a, a client who may have already been diagnosed with a certain psychopathology through your coaching support realize that perhaps they're experiencing a spiritual awakening and there may be challenging experiences within that which Stan Groff refers to as spiritual emergency. 
and the client in coming to realize that they're having a spiritual crisis instead of a mental illness can be extremely liberating. So you're actually going to study what are the phenomena of a spiritual emergency and how do we compare those to psychoses so that we can accurately identify with the client what is really presenting for them. And then through that, either continue working with the client in a way that remains meaningful and helpful to them or refer that client to somebody who's better trained in clinical care, for example. Does that answer your question around that, Dawn? Yeah, I think, I think, I guess, um, we see such a lack of intimacy within society today that I think a lot of the time, I think people end up just experiencing it through coaching or therapy. And um, yeah, it's it's hard to know how to be firmer with those edges. So I guess, did, did you say that there was a separate course that you were, that you offer about six sessions? Was that in something else or was that part of this? It's part of this. All right, great. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm. I mean, just to, uh, to pick up on, on what Dawn is saying, about about ethics i mean we ethics is really important to us i mean ethics as ethics within transpersonal coaching we do take that very seriously and it's very important for us um but now you know you must also realize that in any any relationship this would apply to any therapeutic relationship as well as a coaching relationship this idea of we are completely objective in my mind is actually sort of a false, we, we, we think we can be objective. Or well, some therapists would say, well, you know, we need to maintain that distance. Um, we need to be objective. I personally think that that's a sort of a misnomer. I don't even know if it's possible. So we as transpersonal coaches would recognize the fact that we are part of that space. When we work with a client or with anyone else for that matter, whether it be family members or strangers or whoever, when we enter other people's space, we are part of that space. We bring ourselves as much as all those other people or other energies, or whatever else might be in that space. And so denying that in a way is actually not an ethical thing to do. So my, my reply would be to say, well, our ethics is not rule-based because you can't govern these things. You can't draw up rules to say you're allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. To me, ethics is about that awareness. It's about being able to track your own energy in that space, about realizing how you are within that space and making sure that you are making that presence resourceful. That ultimately, to me, is what ethics is all about. And it's, it's very much aligned, I think, to our holistic and complete way of approaching what happens within that holding space, that therapeutic space between coach and client or anyone else who you meet and live with or exist in the, on this planet. Thanks, Henny. Yes, indeed. So uh, Henny is in fact chair of the ethics committee at Aleph Trust. So he comes along and conveys deep ethics applicable to coaches as one of our specialist webinars as well. So we do take this seriously. Sol, I'm seeing your follow-up question that you're confused about transpersonal psychology as a typical mental therapy and spiritual, mental and emotional therapy. Well, transpersonal psychology is a broad field of study that has applications in therapy and in coaching. This course is all about the transpersonal applications in the context of coaching. And we draw from transpersonal psychotherapeutic methods as well. And there are even other tools that are common to both, for example, breath work. Um, and there are also a lot of people interested in the psychedelic movement these days. And a lot of people come to this program because they themselves might be facilitators of psychedelic assisted therapy or rituals or practices. And 
they're looking for a skill set to support their clients and um, circle attendees to make sense of the psychedelic experiences and to embody those experiences so that their insights can be useful to them in everyday reality. And so we actually have deep respect for the psychedelic movement and how the psychedelic experience can be meaningful to people. And so transpersonal coaching has a specific application that is all about integration, the integration of spiritual experiences or psychedelic experiences for that matter to uh, support the people on, on, on that particular path. Um, so I'm hoping that this begins to point to the various directions and applications of tra transpersonal psychology in the applied domain. Any other follow-ups to that? Welcome. Well, we're reaching full time. Are there any unanswered questions on the tip of your tongue? The newest resource that we've added to this program is the journal, which graduates of this program who write excellent final essays are invited to contribute toward. And that is the Journal of Transpersonal Coaching Psychology. And both Henny, Jules, and I are on the editorial board of that particular journal. And um, it's, it's freely available. If, if anybody's interested, you're, you're welcome to, to go ahead and, and read, read about this particular journal. What I'll do right now is I'll just grab the link and drop it into the chat window of our Zoom window here. That's where you can download our journal for free. And you'll be reading about how graduates of this program um, are applying transpersonal coaching in their life. Um, it's a somewhat academic publication, but it does show you the, the credibility of transpersonal coaching in the professional world of transpersonal psychology today. Thank you, Nick, for dropping a, a link into the window now where you can access uh, the application and some supporting information for those of you interested in applying for this program. And uh, if you have any other questions, do feel free to contact Nick via the Aleph Trust website. Check out the information that's available to you there. And uh, I'm also accessible. If you'd like to reach me, I can be reached um, via Aleph Trust if you have any particular questions about the course content for information about the course structure, payments and so on, please contact Nick. And thank you, Nick, for just sharing your email address in the chat window too. So unless there's anything else from anybody else, I'd like to thank you all for being part of this evening's session for showing interest in transpersonal coaching. And we certainly hope to welcome you onto this one year learning and transformative journey with us. Thanks, everybody. Be well. Take good care. Bye Thank for now. You. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Nice to meet Bye. you. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Sorry, one quick question. When's the deadline? <laughs> The deadline for applications is as soon as possible. Um, when we reach our full capacity, uh, we'll be closing. But uh, I think there's the, no particular hurry. If you can get this in by the end of December, you're good. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye. You're Thank well. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.